Amen. 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 Good to be here in Indianapolis today. Amen. It's good to be anywhere on any day. Amen. We're grateful to God for allowing us to still be in the land of the dying. On our way to the land of the living. Yes. And the brother introduced me from Chicago, Indiana. <laughs> I have to check my license plate. Right? <laughs> see if such is the case. Yeah. We bring you greetings from the Robbins Church of Christ in Robbins, Illinois, where we have been privileged to serve for 30 years. Wow. As a matter of yeah. fact, uh, Sunday before last was our 30th anniversary. Amen. 47 years of preaching and 30 years of one church, so I must not be that bad of a guy. I've been married to one woman for 40 years, so God is good. Amen. But I'd like to give my acknowledgments to your chairman, Brother Larry Johnson, who works real hard at this and the staff of brethren that work with him. Larry puts in an inordinate amount of time. I don't think everybody realizes how hard this brother works at this time. And so I, I think that even on Saturday morning, we ought to give Brother Johnson a round of applause. To the host minister, Brother Hubbard, uh, you are inviting me has been privilege. Uh, I appreciate that. Brother Florence, who works with him here. Now, I was a little taken aback because I just got here this morning. And I got up real early to get here. Right. Real early. Not my norm, but I got up real early. And then when I, I got here, I was privileged to look at the program, and I didn't see my name on the program. I said, well, Maybe I'm at the wrong place. <laughs> but um, I was told that there was some something that went on, I don't know, but I'm just glad to be here. Oh, yeah. God bless us to get here safely, that's the main thing. Now, um, the brother here told me that he wants me to be timely. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how Timely is relative. That could be his time. Or not. So I'm, I'm going to take that in the perspective of being his time. Um, Brother Florence informed me that um, the subject that he wanted me to address was the certainty of his plan. The certainty of his plan. Taken from the book of Ephesians. Amen. So if you have your copy of God's Word, I want to invite you to Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, I would like for someone to read, I believe, the third verse of Ephesians chapter 1. And for the sake of time, I won't deal with all of the particulars that are involved in this great chapter. Because what Paul does, number one, he gives us the theological perspective of what the gospel is. We know according to 1 Corinthians 15 that the gospel encompasses the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is that right? Amen. But in Ephesians chapter 1, he enlarges upon the theological approach as to what God has done for us. And don't get it twisted. We didn't do anything for God. It's what he has done for us. Third verse of Ephesians chapter 1 says what? Blessed be the God uh -huh. and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, read on. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places uh -huh. in Christ. Read on. According as he has chosen us in him mm -hmm. before the foundation of the world. Okay. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. All right. Now, first of all, understand this. In God's scheme of redemption, God had purposed in his mind yes, sir. before yeah. he said, let there be. Yes, sir about how he would bring man back right. 
into a meaningful relationship with him. God knew what Adam would do even before Adam was created. But the one thing we can appreciate about God is that he does not tamper with our will and our volition. God gives us the opportunity of making our own choices. But there is a consequence behind the choices that we make. Now, just to put this in capsule size form, because I don't have a lot of time, in the certainty of God's plan, we find number one, adoption. Yes, sir. Adoption. Number two, we find redemption. Say amen when you can. God has adopted us. Those of us who have conformed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not because we earn the right. Not because we deserve to be adopted. But God adopted us into his family because of what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. Now, understand this. And I'm almost through. Paul understood Roman culture. And under the Roman law, a man who had a whole lot of sons could sell one of his sons to a man who did not have any. And what they would do, they would go down to the courthouse and they would draw up a legal agreement and the man who had no sons could adopt a son from the man who had many sons. Subsequently, that son would be transferred into the family of the one who had no sons. Now, what God did, he drew up a legal agreement. Yeah. Signed in blood. At the cross of Calvary, where we could be transplanted from the family of Satan into the family of Jesus Christ. He adopted us because of Jesus Christ. And then he redeemed us. And I'm so glad he redeemed me. Let me give you an illustration. A few years ago, Frank. I received a letter from the Illinois Department of Professional Regulations. I have a counseling certificate. Matter of fact, I'm a licensed clinical pastoral counselor. But somebody called downtown. And the folk downtown said, are you, and you know how folk are in the world, are you Reverend Penn? <laughs> and I wouldn't go argue with him right then about holy and Reverend is that name. That wouldn't play. Well, I said, yes. He said, well, we need you to come downtown because there is an issue here to be discussed. I said, well, what is this about? He said, well, you need to come downtown. So they sent me a letter, and I looked at the letter, and it said that I had claimed that I was a licensed professional counselor. And so I called my daughter. And she came by the house and she read the letter. And she said, well, what this means is that we're going to have to go downtown because she's an attorney. And I said, I ain't done nothing wrong. <laughs> so she said, well, daddy, we just got to go downtown, that's all. Bring all your credentials, all your paperwork, all your degrees and everything, and we'll go see what the man has to say. So we get to the James Thompson Center. And before we get on the elevator, she says to me, now, when we get before the hearing officer, don't you say nothing. And I said, what? You're my child. What you talking? She said, right now, I'm 
your lawyer. Let me do all the talking. So what God has done because of Jesus, come on now. Jesus has dragged us into the courtroom and he has said, you can't say nothing. I'll do your talking for you. And the Lord stands before the great God of heaven and he defends us, not because of us, but because of him. You understand what I'm saying? God redeemed us. Not because of us, but because of the work of Jesus Christ. So there is adoption, there is redemption, and then there is reconciliation. Oh, that's good news. He reconciled us. Do you not know that absent and apart from Jesus Christ, we could not have fellowship with God? God won't deal with us. Why? Because we are sinners. So we have no right to come to church, but our Sunday going to be closed on acting like we better than somebody else. It is only because of his grace and his mercy. And you do know what grace is, don't you? Grace gives us what we don't deserve. And mercy keeps from us what we do deserve. Y'all got a moment here? I'm close. Romans 5. Let's, let's look at that right, right quick. Romans 5, verse number 12. Then we'll be done for the day. But this is the certainty of God's plan. He chose us in Him through the work of Jesus Christ. You ain't earned nothing. It's because of His grace. And because of his mercy. Now watch this. Romans 5, 12 says what? Wherefore, Wherefore as, by one man, as by one man, sin entered, sin entered, sin entered into, the into the world. Read. And death, and death by, sin. by sin. Come on. And so death, uh -huh. death passed upon all men. Because what? For, that all have sinned. For in that all have sinned. Not y'all, all. Yeah. And don't confuse Romans 5 and 12 with Romans 3 23. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes, By virtue of the fact that we are Adam's offspring, yeah. Yeah. there is a double imputation that has gone on. Right. Come on, walk with me here. Yeah. Adam's sin was imputed to us, yeah. our sin was imputed to Christ. And the righteousness of Christ was thus imputed to those who have obeyed the gospel. Right. Right. Everybody that is born yeah. is born with the proclivity to sin. Yeah. Think I'm lying? You got any churn? <laughs> One thing about churn, that's children in Chicago. <laughs> You never have to teach children to do wrong. You know why? It's in the genes. And I ain't talking about the Levi's. We have to teach children to do right because wrong is automatic. We came here with a bent nature. And that's why we have to get a new nature. And even though we get a new nature, don't they ever think that old nature dies? You tell me I got five minutes, I'm going to make good use of this. One illustration. My dad, my late father, bless his heart, good man. My daddy was a decorated World War II soldier. Sergeant in the United States Army. Even after his passing, during the presidency of Ronald Reagan, they sent to us a big certificate, posthumously, acknowledging my father for his service in the United States Army. Still got his ribbons, his medallions, all his, his medals, everything. But my father, before he passed, was a diabetic. And the last time I checked, 
there has been no cure for diabetes. You can control diabetes, but there is no cure for diabetes. As long as my daddy took his medication, he was all right. Couldn't even tell him. Good to go. But I saw him some days when he missed. He was a whole different person. Folks, all of us have been infected with spiritual diabetes. And the only thing we can do Take the medicine. Even though you've been in the church 40 years, Satan will get in the bed and he'll mess with you. And if you don't take your medicine, you won't act like a child of God. You act like a child of Satan. Amen, somebody. I encourage every one of you understand God's plan is that we all have been adopted, we've been redeemed, we've been reconciled. But you got to take your medicine. When you miss your medication, ain't no telling how you act. See, I got some folk that only take their medication once a week. That's why they act so crazy. 